Hello and welcome to the teacher's staff room. Today I'm going to be going through the CTEC Business Level 3 pre-release uh, information for the summer series of exams in 2023. The exam date is 16th of May. It's a two hour exam and if you're setting this as a research topic, I have set the due date as the 30th of April 2023. All of the links to the resources will be provided in the description of the video below. And if you are a teacher, then of course you can pause this video as you go through to then share with your students in class. So a reminder of the exam that is taking place in May. The exam is split into three sections. We have section A, which comprises of multiple choice questions. Section B comprises of short answer questions and questions requiring more extended responses based on a pre-release research brief. And that is what we are going through today. Then section C comprises of short answer questions and questions requiring more extended responses based on an unseen scenario. So that will be a case study uh, which is unseen and uh, please check out my other videos because I have a complete walkthrough of an exam paper, how to answer the case study and how to answer the 12 mark questions. A reminder guys that you can use a calculator in the exam and please bring a black pen with you as well. The exam will be graded as near pass, pass, merit or distinction. So uh, that's the grading uh, that will be um, available for this particular paper. So here is the instructions for the research task. As part of your examination in May, you are required to carry out your own research. Use this document to place all of the research in one place. You may add pages and anything that will help you revise. So for example, it could be tables, pictures, graphs, infographics, facts and figures. The more research you do, the more prepared you will be for the questions in the section B part of the exam. This is a mandatory piece of work. You cannot sit the exam unless you complete this. So think about that. You're going to have a whole section that you would not be able to complete because you haven't carried out your research, which would be a real shame. So here is the pre-release research brief. You should carry out your own research on the themes given in this research brief. You are advised to research a number of different types of businesses. Your research will help you prepare for your examination. Your research is only for your own use. You must not bring your notes into the examination. A clean copy of the research brief will be provided in the examination. So this particular exam would like you to research the following themes. So the non-financial aims of a business, matrix structures and the impact on business operations, the benefits of using long-term sources of finance, responding to the ever increasing demands of stakeholders and complying with the requirements of the General Data Protection Regulation, which we also call GDPR. The questions in section B of the examination will require you to draw on the knowledge and understanding which you have gained while researching these themes. So everything that you need to research those themes is in this video. So let's take a look at that now. 
So the following section is for you to complete and then you will hand in as a finished piece of work. It then becomes your revision document for the exam. So the very first theme then is the non-financial aims of a business. This actually comes from learning outcome one within the specification, which is understanding the different types of businesses and their objectives. Now, what I have done here is added some information from the textbook to help you understand and sort of put your knowledge and understanding, uh, you know, down on uh, the next slide. And for this particular research theme, we're going to focus on reputation and a community interest company. But before we look at the company, what you will find is after each theme and laying out the um, specification, I've added a slide where you will add your definitions. So in this particular slide, if you can put your definition in of what we mean by a non-financial aim, and what we mean by reputation. And you're going to give then some explanation with some examples just again, so that you're um, making sure that when you come to revise, you've got that um, knowledge and understanding needed to then go forward and answer the question. So the business that we are going to be focusing on is the co-op. I'm sure you all have a co-op that's local to where you live. And as you can see, there are two links here. Both of these links contain really rich research in terms of the co-op, in terms of its business objectives and its non-financial aim of reputation. So quite simply, you're going to go through, you're going to read those documents, and then you're going to summarise your information on this slide, ready for when you need to revise. Then we go on to the second theme, which is matrix structures and their impact on business operations. This comes from learning outcome three, which is understand the effect that different organisation structures have on how businesses operate. So again, here I've put um, a bit of an explanation from the textbook and the matrix structure diagram on the right hand side. And again, same format, you're going to go in and put your definition of a matrix organisation structure and then give some kind of um, explanation with some examples there, again, just to reaffirm your knowledge and understanding. I have included a, another extract from the textbook um, and this is four matrix structures looking at advantages and drawbacks and the uh, best situated to. So again, it's about reading through and making sure you understand ready for when you're actually carrying out the research in the organisation. So the organisation that we're going to focus on for this particular theme is Starbucks. So again, what you're going to do is click on the link you're going to read about their matrix structures and what the impact is on their business. You're going to summarise that information and add it to this slide. Then theme three is the benefits of using long term sources of finance. And this particular theme um, draws knowledge and understanding from learning outcome seven and learning outcome four. And in learning outcome four, you will remember it is about interpreting financial documents for uh, how healthy a business is. And you will find when we're talking about long term sources of of finance, uh, we usually find that information on the statement of financial position as a non-current liability. And again, what I've done is I've just popped in there the bits from the textbook. And for this particular theme, we're going to focus on the long term source of finance in it being a loan. So a bank loan that a business has taken out um, and to use within the business, obviously, to fund uh, a particular uh, thing that it wants to do. 
the definition again. So can we put in the loan uh, definition and long term finance definition? And again, some kind of explanation and example there um, just to reaffirm your knowledge and understanding. And the business that we are going to use for this long term sources of finance theme is JD Sports. And what I have done is I have put in the uh, annual report for them. It is a very, very big document. So feel free if you want to read more uh, of the document than you need to. Um, but you will find all of the information for this particular bit of research on page 145 page 190 and page 191. So you simply need to take a look at those pages, see what long term finance this business is using and then summarise the benefits to JD Sports using this particular source of finance. Theme four is responding to the ever increasing demands of stakeholders. And this comes from learning outcome five, which is understand the relationship between businesses and stakeholders. So again, I have put in some bits from the textbook there, looking at benefits and drawbacks of meeting stakeholder needs. And the next slide is for you to outline what we mean so a definition of what we mean about of uh, stakeholders and for this particular bit of research we're going to just focus on customer demands and therefore what do we mean by customer demands maybe you can think of particular customer demands um, and put them in here again to reaffirm your knowledge and understanding and for this one, we're going to use the business McDonald's. So again, I have got the research for you and pop the link in here and you're going to go through. And again, it's quite a big document, but it's actually a really nice, colourful, uh, easy to read type document, this one. So feel free again if you want to read the whole thing through. If not, then please focus on page 15, page 4 and page 16. And they specifically talk about meeting demands um, of their customers and different things that they have put in place in response to what those customers demand or need or what have you. And then the last theme, complying with the requirements of the General Data Protection Act or otherwise known as GDPR. This comes from Learning Outcome 6, which is understand the external influences and constraints on businesses and how businesses could respond. So again, from the textbook, I've put the text in. They call it the Data Protection Act in the textbook, but it is that's the old name for the legislation. The new name is GDPR, uh, but it, it is uh, based on uh, the Data Protection Act. And so you can use this information just to obviously sort of set the scene again, reaffirm your knowledge and understanding. And then you're going to put a definition in for GDPR. And then on this one, I would like you to think about the different types of data that a business may hold on customers. So just start thinking about all the different uh, documents, potentially um, think about the contact points that they have with customers and the sorts of information they will be gathering. So the business for this last one is going to be Cineworld. So there is two uh, links on this page. So information four, which is section 10. And then how do we obtain consent section five? And again, you're going to click through and it is their policy documents on what they do with customer personal information and how they store it. So again, you're going to read that, you're going to summarise it and then obviously you'll be able to answer questions in terms of how they comply with this legal requirement. So just so that you make sure that you have covered all of the research, I have put a little table in here with the different businesses so that you can obviously cross match whether you've covered the theme and the business. 
And of course, you can use this to then add yes or no as a checklist as you're going through this particular document. So thank you for watching. Um, there will be more content uploaded shortly um, for teachers and possibly students as well. So please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.